So this morning we are going to start um, a little exploration of the five yamas. So the five yamas are the first limb of the eight limbs of yoga. Some of you are very familiar with that. Some of you have been in my classes when we've done this stuff before. But even if you have heard this stuff before, hearing it again can be like incredible. This is not like a checklist. We like shopping lists where we, you know, pick up the avocados, pick up the almond milk. Oh no, you can't get almond milk anymore. Oat milk. So we like those things where we check it and it's done. But this is a this is a lifetime practice, and this is a good one. This is why it's the first part of the first limb of the eight limbs of yoga. So the first of the eight limbs of yoga is ahimsa. Ahimsa. It's a two part word. The a is like non, and the himsa part is harming. So the simple translation of this, teach trainees, take note. This is on the exam. Ahimsa non harming. And if you just write that down in your exam, bam, you're going to get your mark. But that is not really what ahimsa is all about. It's a good place to start. And if we were going to teach this to some six year olds, Jessica, don't hit Jen. Jen, don't hit Jessica. Bam. Okay, we're in agreement. Good. You guys aren't going to hit each other. But that's the, the, the kind of the most bare minimum practice of ahimsa that we could do. Ahimsa is much more of a spectrum, and I've thought about this a lot because it's on my wall, it's on my clothes, it's on my license plate. For 10 years, I've been thinking about Ahimsa all the time. And what I started to figure out was that the recipe for Ahimsa is not the same for everybody. Some people say you got to be vegetarian to be Ahimsa. Some people say vegetarian is not enough. you got to be vegan. None of that is true. But all of us have things that we do which fall towards one end of the spectrum and other things that we do which are closer to the other end of the spectrum. So one end of the spectrum, spectrum of Ahimsa, is terrible things. Terrible things like murder and torture and rape and all kinds of violence. There is tons of stuff that is on this side of the spectrum. And on the other end of the spectrum, what's on the other end of the spectrum? Not doing no harm. Non-harming is the middle of that spectrum no harm. The opposite of murder and rape and torture is what? Unconditional love. Unconditional love. Unconditional love, compassion, and kindness. Now there's conditional love on the spectrum too. And there's, you know, uh, kind of grudgingly doing something nice for somebody because I'm supposed to, you know, supposed to give to Sal Salvation Army at Christmas. I guess I'll do that too. And that's good because that doesn't do harm and it does good, but it's coming from a different place than actual love and kindness or unconditional love and kindness. And in the same way, if you're not murdering, torturing or raping people, then yeah, good, please keep it that way. And there are other things that we are doing on this side of the spectrum too. Every single one of us does things that are on this side of the spectrum of no harm. And it could be the things that we do, the things that we say, the things that we think, which takes us to the spheres of Ahimsa. I'm going through this as quick as I can. So if it feels like it's fast, it's supposed to be. So there are different spheres of Ahimsa. And one is doing things physically. So I'm going to ask Jessica not to hit Jen. I'm going to ask Jen not to hit Jessica. Good. If they've taken care of that, that's great. But at one point, Jessica and Jen were teenage girls. And teenage girls say terrible things. So speech is another way that we create harm. Even if like at this age, most of us are not like dropping the gloves and getting into the fisticuffs too often, but people say really hurtful things or you get online and you make some nasty comment and that stuff happens all the time. So speech is also a part of how we create harm. And even beyond that, and definitely we wanna start with the physical stuff and then work towards the speech stuff and then your thoughts. Because we have these thoughts that live in our heads, which create a kind of harming, harmful energy within us. And even if you never say anything bad to somebody, and in your head, your, or your face is nice and relaxed, and you're like, oh, yes, I'm so happy to see you. But in your head, you're like, you fucking... <laughs> like, that hurtful energy, that's toxic. And that is on the spectrum of Ahimsa. It's certainly not no harm because it's creating a toxicity within each of us. Anybody ever get to the end of a day where they've been having all kinds of negative thoughts and they just feel like sticky and they just want to get out of their skin? That's the energy of Ahimsa, not non-harming. It's on this side of the spectrum. So we can clean up things on all sides there. And 
to make it even more fun, we have different spheres of where the influence is. So your own self is one thing that you got to take care of in your yoga practice. You want to make sure you're not doing harm to your own body. You're not thinking terrible and hurtful thoughts to yourself. You're not saying horrible things to yourself. But others, the people around you, that's important. And ultimately, Ahimsa is about how we interact with the world around us. So I want to be nice to my neighbor. Hi, Hazel. Hi. You know, I want to be nice <laughs> to all the people around me and be mindful of the impact that I'm having on them. But also, we got to look past our neighbors and think about the world at large. So there are these three spheres, your own smallest sphere, your immediate sphere of your neighbors, and then there's the big sphere of like our global situation. That's a pretty big one for us right now. We got a lot of non-harming that we could kind of improve on in that level. And all these things come from certain seeds that we plant. So it's not just a matter of, I'm not going to hit somebody, I'm not going to hit somebody. There are things that create the conditions in which those things happen. So seeds of ahimsa are things like patience. When you practice patience, it gets easier. Presence, when you're really present, then that makes a big difference. Compassion. Kindness. Those things, when you actually practice those things, they create a, an environment in which all this stuff gets a little easier. And the things that we do end up a little bit more on this spectrum. There are also seeds that create more harm. And those things would be obviously number one, and this is something we've really got to watch out for in our yoga practice, aggression. And sometimes you might not recognize certain things as aggression, but if you're ever in a pose and you start to grit your teeth, and your lips get really tight, I can see that on your face. It's scary <laughs> because it is the seeds of harm. Now, you're not likely to get up and like intentionally hurt your hamstrings or something like that. But when somebody is driving from that place of aggression in their practice, their thinking is different and they're willing to push through certain kinds of pain and discomfort because they've got an idea that they're attached to. I'm getting this. This is mine. Ah! And those seeds of aggression, when they're not in place, people don't get hurt in yoga. When you're pushing and overriding those things with that drive, that need to go further, then the likelihood of getting injured, very little. So that's all a part of practicing non-harming towards your body, physically body, physical body, but also your psychology and your emotional state. Because we can be real hurtful towards ourselves when we feel like we're not doing good enough, we are not good enough. All that stuff is a really important part of our practice. And we're planting the seeds with every moment in our practice, every breath, every posture, every time. Now, in addition to aggression, we're almost done here. See, I've got almost no more space to write on the board. And then in addition to aggression, one of the other things that happens, and this kind of creates sometimes unintentional harm. There's intentional harm where I intend to hurt Hazel. And then there's unintentional harm where just because of my carelessness, I might do something which causes her harm. Both of those count. They both land on the side of harming. Intentional is a little further on that spectrum. Unintentional is not quite as far, but it's still hurtful. Like if I crash my car into Hazel's car, her car is still fucked up. So we need to be mindful. One of the unintentional and kind of unconscious seeds of himsa harming is hastiness. Hastiness, when you're just rushing through mindlessly, leads us to do things recklessly and we... we have accents. We do stuff, we say things come out of our mouth we're not thinking about, and we can create harm in lots of unintentional ways. In all of these spheres, physical, we say things that are hurtful, and if we're just not mindful with our thoughts, impulsive. we can, what's that? Impulsive. Yeah, impulsive. And then you're like, ah, oh, I really shouldn't have done that. And if we're not practicing hastiness, or if we're not doing things in a hasty way, it's much less likely that's going to that's gonna happen. So one more in this is selfishness. Now, the journey towards enlightenment is the journey away from selfishness. And there is a certain amount of self-interest that we all have to practice. Like, you guys are on your mat, not to help Amanda, except Amanda. Amanda's here to help herself. But if we exclusively think about our own situation, we're only taking care of our own stuff, and we just ignore everything around us because it's inconvenient, then we start to do things which are harmful to others, right? I'm just taking care of myself, my family, my house. And then if I got nothing else to do, I'll take care of Marilyn too. We have to think a little bit bigger than that as soon as we can afford to. Now, survival is a different thing, but most of us, if you're here on a Monday morning at 10 a.m., survival is not your issue. So we just need to be a little bit more mindful of the people around us and be a little bit less selfish in our, you know, our view of the world. Very important. We've got some big problems right now, like big problems, like on so many different levels. 
And those cannot be solved through selfish thinking, selfish behavior. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, this is a, a, a restrictive word, non-harming, don't hurt, but there's a proactive element to it. And that's this practice of love, compassion, and kindness. You can't, it's very hard to practice unconditional love. But as you do more things in that realm of being compassionate, being kind, then the unconditional part comes more naturally. And the less selfish we are in our activities first, our actions and then our speech, it starts to influence our thoughts. And then the unconditionalness comes relatively kind of easier, sort of. Yeah, that's the idea. Now, it's not a measure. It's not a test. It's not like we're going to award, you know, Ahimsa Yogi of the Year award to Hazel because she's the most, you know, patient and present and all that stuff. Every one of us has things that we do which are on this side of the spectrum. And we're not measuring ourselves against Gandhi or Mother Teresa or anybody else. We're just trying to look at what are the things we are doing that are furthest on this end of that spectrum, on our mat and off our mat, and seeing if we can erase some of those things and drop a couple more seeds on this side. And every person has stuff they can do on both ends of that. I mean, think about the, I mean, just think about the balance. Who wants to live more on this side? Nobody. Fictional characters. That's the only, the only people who want to do that is fictional characters. And every real person wants to move at least some direction in this. Even if it's scary, this is kind of where we're all trying to go. So if this is the only yoga class you ever did, if this is the only limb, oh, the only yama of the only limb you ever heard of, and you actually applied this and continue to refine it and re-examine it for the rest of your days, it would lead to a, probably a pretty beautiful life. That's good. Cool. No Hanumanasana is ever going to do that. No handstand is ever going to do that. This, this one practice applied consistently and reevaluated consistency consistently is a life changing practice. And that is why it's on my shirt. That is why it's the name of this place. That's why I drive around with it on my little Prius. Doot, doot. So let's do it. Um, sound good? Ready? Uh, let's come to our next.